Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, or whatever it is, or whatever it isn't. Uh, so today we're going to have a look at page 42, 43, um, because this leads into uh, other stuff in the book that we might get to, or maybe not. What does he mean? Um, so if we have a look at page 41, the pre-read, um, think of the pictures you used to make when you were in primary school, in kindergarten. Um, how did you learn to draw or paint these pictures? Who gave you the instructions? Do you think you can learn to draw from books? Yes, you, you absolutely can. Losing my mic. You absolutely can learn anything from books, but it's slightly more difficult. Uh, a lot of things you really do need to, uh, to be in front of a human being. Um, and look at the situation we have now. You need to be in front of a human being. Um, well, duh. Yeah, it's possible to learn anything from books. Um, for some people, people learn in different ways. Uh, a small percentage of the population will learn everything they need to learn from books. Uh, a larger proportion of the population need to actually do things uh, to have any chance of learning it, especially uh, boys. Um, but it is possible, anything's possible. Um, dragonflies are found all around the world, even in England. Um, more than two and a half thousand different kinds of them. <gasps> dragonflies. So I don't care about this. Oh, exciting. Uh, they can be seen flashing over ponds and rivers or flying into the windscreens of uh, round the world motorcycles. Um, these are their hunting grounds where they catch smaller flying insects. Their swift, graceful flight and brilliant colors are eye catching. Um, yeah, I've caught a few of their eyes on the front of my windscreen. Seriously, as I drove along, I made a joke once about donating the front of my motorcycle to the British Natural History Museum because there were so many dead insects and bits of bird all over the front of it. Um, I wasn't really into washing my bike as much as I was into riding it. Uh, the following passage is an example of a mixed text type. Uh, this kind of passage has the features of two or more text types. Dragonfly, for example, is both a set of instructions and an information report. I would argue that almost everything um, in terms of instructions is to a degree an information report as well. It's giving you the information and telling you how to do something. By definition they're very very similar. So let's, now this is very difficult, read the following passage and answer the questions that follow. So we've got um, basically a set of diagrams about how to draw uh, a dragonfly. Now you've seen these kind of things before where we box them in um, and you draw circles within the boxes and you eventually end up with something that looks vaguely like what you're, you're meant to end up with. We've seen this before. Now if I was doing this in class, um, what I'd do is I'd get uh, volunteers around the classroom to stand up and show me how to draw this. And what I would do is I'd stand up with my teacher pen and I would draw and, and you'd start off by looking at the first one. Um, starting couldn't be simpler, just draw a long rectangle using a pencil the outspread wings will fit into the shape. So as a joke, I would probably try and pick up a pencil, which of course doesn't work. Um, then uh, a long rectangle. So I would draw a very, very, very long rectangle like this. And they'd go, no, 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 that, that, that isn't right. And I'd say, well, I've done exactly what you've told me to do. I've tried to draw on the whiteboard with a pencil. Um, then we'd move on, draw a long line down the center for the insect's long body. So I'd just draw a straight line because it doesn't say where to start. So right down the middle of the whiteboard which again is completely wrong. And the idea of this is it makes a point about how hard it is to follow these instructions without a reference. It just says a long rectangle. Now, because you've got the picture, you've got a reference. If you didn't have that picture and you didn't have somebody making very detailed explanations, it would be very difficult. And this is why explanations um, really need to be accompanied by uh, diagrams, drawings, or in these days, uh, increasingly videos. Um, I mean, we could do this again, we could do this with me just talking into a microphone, but it's, it, it helps to look at somebody who's, uh, who's doing the talking. Um, to put that in perspective, 70% of communication is non-verbal. Non-verbal. And that means that the words I'm speaking only make up 30% of your understanding of what I'm saying. I could say, uh, you're an idiot. But if I say it with a smile, it's a joke. <laughs> you're an idiot. Uh, and, I, and I say that to my friends all the time, you're an idiot. But if you say it aggressively, you're an idiot, takes on a completely different meaning. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. Nonverbal is very, very important. It gives added context. Um, and, and trust me, I, I've seen this firsthand as I've traveled around the world. Um, ultimately, you can communicate in 
pointing, clicking, grunting, and snorting noises, so long as you have a smile on your face, most people will understand that you're trying to talk to them, that you're trying to get a message across, and you can, you can get basic level communication just by, just by trying to communicate with somebody with a smile on your face, a few points and gestures. Most people are gonna cooperate, most people are gonna try and help you, and it's not that difficult. Um, living in uh, Cambodia, when I haven't been able to speak the language, uh, again, non-verbal communication, uh, I don't always understand what words you're saying, but I do understand what people are talking about. I can, I can watch a crowd and I'll understand that one's hungry, this one's in charge, uh, this man likes this woman, and I can pick up on all the nuances that, that people aren't speaking. So I know what people are talking about, even though I can't hear the words. And we all do. At an unconscious level, we all do. Yesterday, um, my wife's sister brought her little boy in, and they were trying to feed him, and he started shaking his head. And I said to her, um, there are tribes in Africa where we've discovered people that have never ever met another human being. Now these tribes live together their whole lives, they, they never hunt outside of their own territory, they have never met another human, let alone another white or Asian person. And people have gone in there and they've found them and their communication is largely the same. They smile when they're happy, they frown when they're confused, they shake their head for no, they nod yes. These aren't things that we learn. These are things that are programmed, hardwired into us. We don't know how and we don't know why, but a lot of our basic communication is built in at a totally instinctive level. Like that. This is fascinating. So you can meet anybody from anywhere around the world and they're basically very similar to you and they will communicate the same way. Um, some languages are harder to learn. Um, uh, Chinese is tonal. Um, Eastern European has completely different syntax to English, so it's quite hard for somebody from uh, a Western country to learn Eastern European. But essentially those languages can be learned because all we need to do is understand the very slightly different rules. Language is language. Um, it's really just a question of, of understanding how the grammar points fit together and then the different words. And then you can speak the language. Um, I'm not good with languages. I, I don't speak Khmer, but I have friends who did. Um, one of my friends, he was learning Khmer with a teacher, Khmer teacher, a very good one by all accounts. And he said he was, he was teaching in the alphabet and he said, I don't understand why because I told him, I, I don't want to learn this, I want to speak, I don't want to write this down. And he went through all the uh, things and he said, and then after a month, he said, it all became clear. He said, suddenly I could speak the language. Not well, but he, he had somehow got him into the patterns of the basics by teaching him the patterns. He knew what he was doing and he got him speaking in, in five or six weeks, he was able to walk into a shop and ask for what he wanted. So, pretty decent. But this is very, very hard. L look at the next one, number two. Um, draw in guidelines for the insect's uh, head and upper body, the head is quite large. Um, it doesn't say draw them inside the box, it doesn't say what shape they are. We could draw a big circle right the way around the box. Its head is very large. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, these slanting lines, what slanting lines? Because uh, at this point, I, you know, I'm, I'm joking with the, uh, the, the kids in the class. I'm saying, look, what slanting lines? You haven't told me to draw any slanting lines. Um, the thin, long body sticks out well behind the wings. Uh, it's uh, shaped rather like a blunt needle. In fact, dragonflies used to be called the devil's darning needles. Needle and thread, needle and thread, needle and thread. Ah! Um, again, that doesn't really help us to draw anything. It doesn't help us to understand what this thing's meant to look like. Most of the head is taken up by two enormous eyes, which actually meet on the top of its head. So at this point, I draw two circles with little eyes and a big smiley face. Does it look like this? And they go, no, it doesn't look like that. Um, within your slanting lines, draw the lower pair of wings. So within the slanting lines that I don't have, I would draw the wings, which again, I, I can't do because I don't have, because you never told me to draw them. And it's fine with, with uh, a diagram in front of you. It does make a lot more sense. but. This is where um, instructions often fall down, where people have this natural presumption that everybody else knows what they know. I know what a dragonfly looks like, so you must know what a dragonfly looks like. And that's where people fall down in terms of instructions. We make that natural mistake that everybody else knows what we're talking about, and often they just simply don't. Um, add the second pair of wings in flight, etc., etc. So we read through this, we look at all the different bits, and if we've done it right, we can usually end up with a dragonfly. Now, if I put the book in front of uh, somebody up the, up the front and I let them draw from this, they can do it. They can draw a dragonfly and it looks pretty close to this. But if I do the same thing with somebody taking it seriously, I, I'll normally muck about. 
and then I'll let somebody have a go. So I'll have somebody up with a pen and I'll, I'll let somebody just call out the instructions and we almost never end up with anything that looks like this. Likewise, um, somebody reading it from the book will get pretty close. You know, we can choose a bad artist and get them to read through this and they'll produce something that's half decent and I can produce a good artist and they'll produce rubbish if they're just taking verbal instructions. And the point of this is not that verbal instructions don't work, it's that um, these instructions aren't complex enough to create this output. Um, we need much more complexity and that's the difference. Um, I could explain to you how to strip down a motorcycle in words, but it would be books and books and books of words explaining every single detail. And it's pointless when I could just give you one diagram. And that's the difference. Sometimes we need a diagram. Now I'm an author, I, I believe in the power of the written word. I live by the power of the written word. But sometimes I have to admit, you need a diagram, you need a picture. Um, what if you were trying to talk about a terrible event in history and you said uh, uh, this, this horrendous thing happened and it was awful. Um, and you have to believe me because I said so. Well, if I can just simply add one photograph showing you this happening, it makes a huge emotional impact. And the reason is, for the vast majority of us, the overwhelming majority of human beings, we think visually. We don't think in terms of, of um, hearing things, we don't think in terms of touching things, we think in terms of what they look like. And that's why we sometimes simply need to see them. Now with a fictional novel, uh, most people will read a book and will imagine it in their heads, they will visualize the imagery. We think visually. That's how, that's how the brain works for most of us. There are some people that's an exception for, and I'm not just talking about um, blinded people, I'm talking about some people just don't think that way. Most people do. So what we've done is we've read through this. Um, there isn't really any point because it is just little sound bites. You read through this and then you have a basic working outline of how to draw uh, a dragonfly. And that's what you should end up with. So normally in class, this will take a lot longer, we'll go through it. I'll let people try and draw the dragonfly. We'll make the point about instructions not working because they need a huge extra level of complexity and we simply don't have time to add that in a book of this size. I could tell you how to do it um, in this much text, but it would be much more complex, um, it would be very difficult to read and it would be boring and time consuming. It would be difficult for me to write. I wouldn't enjoy it, you wouldn't enjoy reading it, fewer people will read it. Whereas, I could give you the same thing with these diagrams, you'd be much more likely to read it and it would be more successful. And that's all we're talking about here. That's the point this is trying to make, that sometimes there's no getting around it, we simply need, we need diagrams. There are pictures. So, there's not much reading in here. I don't suppose there's any vocabulary that we're not sure of. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go away and I'm going to let you um, go through the questions. We're gonna go through one through 12 um, and then we'll come back with um, your answer to these questions.